everybody, it's Chris from Race Car Camp. I just want to say thank you for following along on our engine build series thus far. I hope it has inspired you to go and try some of this on your own and really taught you that it's not that hard to do any of this stuff. Just go slow and just follow the instructions. I also really want to thank Wob, who supplied all the tools that you saw featured throughout this build series and Midwest Miata Parts who supplied all the parts that you saw featured in this build series. I also want to thank Force for giving us an opportunity to build this motor for their charity raffle car and once we learn more about the complete car and when it will be available we'll be sure to post that as well. We are finally up to the cylinder hone stage. You should always hone a cylinder with lubricant. You can use motor oil but there also is honing oil. Start to work it up and down. You don't want to work in any one spot too long. 30 degree cross hatch. And there you see some cross hatch for the rings to seat. I hope you guys can see it. I just want to show you how to use these piston ring removal tools. Um, stick your thumb on one end, it'll push the other two out. And then they go in and lift off. Now you don't need anything this fancy. It makes it a hell of a lot easier. And then here we are with the next ring. And now the oiler. So this one you can't really use the tool on so I just have a little pick. These ones are basically fried in there because this was a high mileage, poorly oil changed motor, which I've said probably a hundred times. Um, but once you get it loose, that just works out in its own way. Do the other one. And there you go. To clean these, I'm going to soak them in solvent because these are pretty bad. But you can use the old one, the old ring, and just come in here and use it like a pick and just scrape the gunk out. You can already see we're getting a chunk of gunk. And now we're going to size each piston ring up with each cylinder and check the gap. So from here on out, each one of these is now going to be mated to their cylinder. So check the piston ring gap. We've seated the piston ring in. We're going to push it down so that we know it's even with the piston. Measure the gap with our feeler gauge. The min gap is 0 0.006. We have that fine. The max gap for new is 0 0.0011. There's a little bit of friction there, so that's just right. And then the max gap that you're allowed, service limit is 0 0.01920. And that doesn't fit in, so we're good. And you just check each one. The chamfer on this goes up on the piston. Probably can't make the chamfer out on the video, but we simply seat it in. Our oilers are pretty straightforward. Now, uh, your rings will come with manufacturer directions, which are probably different than the book directions. So our particular rings say to put the oiler screen in first, Put one of the spacers in, as they call it in their instructions. Okay, and then the bottom. Our instructions from the manufacturer say to space the gaps between the three rings approximately one inch. We have a gap here on the top ring, here on the oiler. And here on the bottom ring, we're going to call that about one inch. And then our actual piston rings want uh, like one thirds offset. So you'll see how those are going to go. So now we're taking a top groove piston ring and we're just going to check the tolerances on a piston. This isn't the final install. <clears throat> we just want to make sure there hasn't been too much slapping around or anything. 0.0012 to 0.0025. It is 0 0.0015, here's 0 0.0025, and it's smaller than that. So we're right in the middle of that threshold, so we are good. I'm just going to check this 
in a couple of places. All right, so we're a little tight at 0 0.0025. So now we'll put it at 0 0.006. So we are good. We're right inside the service window. Wash, rinse, repeat on all four. But this should probably be the same on all of them. And that is a done piston ready to be popped in. So first we put these on completely dry. We've just cleaned all the ledges. The tabs line up and then the bearing goes in. Now we carefully set the crank on top of those fresh bearings as we don't want to mar up the bearings and we definitely don't want to mar up the crank oil bearing mating surface. You'll also place the thrust bearing on the number four bearing tower, exactly where you remove them from. Plastic gauge is sort of the last stop after you've used all the other tools that we've used with the calipers and the spacers. We're going to come back and add just a slice of this very precision printed plastic gauge. Double check all the other measurements we've been taking. You'll want to cut your plastic gauge about as wide as the bearing is and then lay it perpendicular to the block so that it follows parallel in line with the crank, basically at a 90 degree angle on that bearing surface. And we'll place one on each bearing mating surface because each one of these will need measured individually. And remember that these face forward. And just like final assembly, we oil all the studs before putting them in. This ensures their torque spec is accurate. And now we're just hand tightening all the bearing caps so that I can chase them back with torque and go in incremental steps. So the torque spec on our main bolts is 40 for the 1.8. So I'm going to start at 20 on each one and go in the pattern. And then we'll go 30. And then we'll go 40. And then we get the joy of taking it all off and seeing how it looks on the plastic gauge to make sure that our bearings are properly sized for the oil passage. Okay, so that's 20, going up to 30. And it's actually 43 the max, and since we're checking the oil clearance, I'm gonna go to the max. Undo all that hard work in the same order and check the plastic gauge for clearance. 0 0.0016, that is what we are allowed and we're well under that with 0 0.0015. So we are perfectly inside that at 0 0.0015, slightly under 0 0.0015. We'll just take each one of these off make sure we're good, and then put them all back on again. And then after this, it's going in the motor forever. Don't forget your assembly lube here for the bearings that are placed in the tower, as well as the bearings that are placed in the cap. You need it on both sides. And also don't forget it on your thrust bearings. So go back and add that if you haven't so thus far. Again, we're torquing everything down in incremental steps. Be sure to clean up the aluminum holding in the rear main seal as much as possible. This can be a very common source for leaks after a fresh motor rebuild. You can see here I also chase it with a hammer just to clean up all those gaps. Now we have 
have to do the connecting rod bearings. Uh, I'm gonna put the crank nose back on so that I can more easily turn everything by hand. So these are gonna go down like this. Now this is very multi-step process. Our rings are aligned correctly. We're gonna apply our spring compressor. Fresh oil. Spring compressor. And you leave a little bit of the skirt hanging out because that's gonna help us align everything. Compress. These marks, the two marks, go on the right side. Lower it down. The skirt lines up, and you're gonna need something with a wooden handle. Boom. We have a piston in a block. You see the connecting rod, our marks line up, and then we're gonna tighten it down. Now we're doing this without oil because we're gonna plastic gauge it. Cap, plastic gauge, make sure we got no oil in there, and no dirt, tighten it to spec to make sure our bearings are accurate. So again, we're gonna do it in steps. 30 first. Now 35. And now, take it off. Our tolerance is under 0.0015. 0.0011 to 0.0027. So connecting rod oil clearance is good. Wash, rinse, repeat for four of them. Be sure to chase the perimeter of the oil pump with Permatex so you don't have any leaks. There is no gasket here, so Permatex is the only seal. And then we'll reuse the original hardware and torque at the spec. The front main oil seal gets lubricated before we put it on. And then I reach for my super sweet flying Miata tool and use that to press it on to perfection. The same way we did the head in the previous video. The water pump goes on with a new gasket for Mazda, and again we reuse the hardware and torque to spec. It's starting to look like a motor again. Head install is next, and I'm very excited for it. I'm just gonna give it one more wipe Check for any lint or debris. So here we found a little red fur. Smooth to the touch, no residual gasket material. The holes only line up one way. Boom. That is all the holes lined up, all cooling passages, all the stud holes. And now it's time to get the head. There are supposed to be collars that line this up for us, but they appear to be recessed. Hopefully we were able to get those sleeves out. So we got them just tapped in here. You can see it holds everything a little better. Now when we go to put the head on, ooh, she's a little heavy. Should line up, bingo, drops right on. Do not force it. You saw how quickly that dropped. That's how you know it's in the right spot. We reuse the head studs from Mazda. Don't forget the washers and don't forget to oil them before you put them in. Final torque on everything. The sequence is very similar to what we did on the mains to start and do your spiral out in the middle. So the torque is 56 to 60. So we're gonna start on 40, then go 50, then go 55.
Okay, that is a head on a block. Now we just have to set the timing on the motor and my wife was nice enough to give me a hand. If you made it this far, I'm gonna assume you know how to do a timing belt job. And if not, there's a lot of great tutorials out there. But this video is getting pretty long, so I'm just gonna put the valve cover on, put the oil pan baffle in, and the oil pan on. Now, normally you would RTV these in, of course, because you need to prevent the oil leaks, but we have to replace one bearing on the number three rod because it was bad from the manufacturer, so I'm just putting ours on loose. And we'll change the final bearing before we put the motor in the donor car for the charity raffle. That's it for this video. I hope you've learned something. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you for the next one when we work on our high compression 1.8, but maybe a few things in between.